here we present a simplified version of the Mary's model of the managerial enterprise. First, we shall see the goal of the firm. In this model, the goal of the firm is the maximization of the balanced rate of growth. That is, maximize G is equal to GD is equal to GZ. G is the balanced growth rate. GD is the growth rate of the demand for the products of the firm. And GC is a growth of the supply of the capital. In this model, we consider the maximization of the utility of both the managers and the shareholders. GD actually stands for the maximization of the goal of the managers, whereas GC stands for the maximization of the goal of the shareholders. Then we directly come to the model equilibrium of the firm. The managers aim at the maximization of their utility, which is a function of the growth of the demand for the products of the firm. That is, this is. So this shows the managerial utility function. Utility of manager is a function of growth of the demand for the product. Now, this one, U owners is a function of GC. That shows that GC or the rate of growth of capital of a firm is what determines the utility of the owners. Or owners will get maximum utility when there is an increase in the rate of growth of the capital of the firm. Then the equilibrium is attained when GD is equal to GC, that is G or stick maximum. This is a balanced growth rate. When this reaches the maximum, then we say that the firm is in equilibrium. So the first stage in the solution of the model is to derive the demand and supply functions, that is to determine the factors that determine GD and GC. So since GD and GZ are very important in this model, we have to see what factors determine this GD and GC. Maris established that the factors that determine GD and GC can be expressed in terms of two variables. One is diversification rate, small letter D, and the average profit margin, which is labeled as small letter M. To put it, to put it in other words, we say that we are going to write GD, that is the growth in the demand for the product, as a function of two variables, D. D shows diversification rate and M. M is the average profit margin. Likewise, we are also going to show the rate of growth of capital stock is a function of two variables, that is diversification rate and the average profit margin. Now, the rate of growth of the demand for the products of the firm, GD. GD is a function of the diversification rate. And first we write, it sets a function of diversification rate and K. K is a percentage of successful new products. So actually we will come to this uh, G, GD Finally, it has to be written as a function of two things, D and uh, M. But first, we write uh, GD as a function of these two variables. D is diversification rate and K is the proportion of successful new products. What is diversification rate? Diversification rate is defined as a number of new products introduced per unit of per time period. We know that firms always expand by introducing a number of new products because a firm cannot go on producing 
one product and retain the market. If it is to retain the market, then it has to come out with, in, with new products. So diversification rate just, show, just shows the number of new products introduced per time period. And what is K? K is a proportion of the successful new products. That means all new products introduced in the market by the firm may not be a success. Some products will fail. So K shows the proportion of successful new products introduced by the firm in the market. Of the total product introduced by the firm in the market, how much percentage, how much portion of that becomes a success? Sometimes 20% may become success. Sometimes 90% may become success. Means almost near 100% success. Sometimes a firm may be able to attain. So K simply shows the proportion of successful new products. Now, what are the factors that determine K? The proportion of successful new products K depends on the rate of diversification. Of course, D also determines K. Then price of the product. If the price is too high, the people will not purchase it. So price of the product is a is something which determines the uh, determines the value of K. Then advertisement. If you give good advertisement, then it is likely that the product may become a success. Then research and development. That research and development initiatives which you undertake behind the introduction of a product. If your research and development is good, and through that, if you have developed a good product, then the its success rate may be high. Then intrinsic value of the product, that's quality of the product. Then man is used as M as a proxy for these policy variables. So that means instead of all these variables determining K, Maris writes, Maris uses M. So M is a proxy variable for all these variables. All these variables means price, advertisement, research and development, and industry value. D is separately taken out because we I have already said that GD will be written as a function of D and M, D and M. So therefore, uh, from the initial equation of GD as a function of D and K, D and K, now we have come to this equation. That is this function, that is GD is written as a function of D diversification rate and profit margin M. So therefore profit margin M simply is used here as a proxy for the variables price advertisement and research and development. So finally, we get the, this equation, uh, means uh, at this part of the analysis, we get this equation, GD is a function of diversification rate and profit margin. Now, in summary, in summary, GD is a function of diversification rate and profit margin. Then if your diversification rate is high, then GD is also likely to be high. That means do GD upon do D that or partially differentiating GD with respect to diversification rate is always positive, greater than one. That means if D increases, GD also increases, but uh, at a declining rate. That's why we have used here declining rate. Then as your profit increases, as your profit increases, then GD is likely to be less. GD is likely to be less. What's the meaning of that? If your profit margin is to be high, if your profit margin is to be high, then it means that you have to set aside a good part of your money for, for uh, giving 
dividends to the shareholders. Okay, if the profit margin is to be high, then it means that the firms will have to set aside a good part of their money for giving profit uh, dividend to the shareholders. Then the money which you can spend for research and development and R&D, etc. will be reduced. And this will definitely result in a decline in GD. That means these two variables are inversely related. That means partially differentiating GD with respect to M, that is a negative one, that is less than zero. That means as M increases, GD is likely to be less. The reason for this is that, I, I, as I have said, uh, as the marginal rate of profit or the, the rate of profit increases, or if it is, is to be high, then your advertisement expenditure will be reduced plus your R&D will be reduced. So what happens is that you will be introducing less and less product in the market. Okay, or the, the growth rate of the growth rate of the new products will be less. So we take this relationship as M increases, GD is likely to be less. And these things you can show with the help of this figure. And in this figure along x-axis, here along x-axis, we show the diversification rate. And along y-axis, we show the growth of the demand for the product. And this curve shows, this curve shows the relation between diversification rate and GD. Keeping AM, M means profit, profit, M means profit, keeping profit constant. So keeping profit constant, what is the relation between D and GD? That is being shown by this curve. And we know that as D increases, GD also increases. So when you have this much diversification rate, your GD is this much. When your GD, when your diversification rate increases, GD also increases, but at a declining rate, that is why it is it is actually bending towards this x-axis. Okay, it goes up, it slopes upward, but uh, as we increase diversification rate, GD will increase at a declining rate. So that's why it is, it is actually bending like this. Okay, but what happens when profit margin increases? When profit margin increases from M1 to M2, this curve will shift downward. When further, when further this M2 increases to M3, again, there will be a decline in GD. Simply meaning, as M increases, the GD comes down. The inverse connection between M and growth of the demand for the product is shown by the downward shift of the growth of the demand for product curve when it increases. Here, we have a positive connection between diversification rate and growth of the demand for the product. But that is a declining one. That's why we have a slope like this. The average rate of profit is constant. Okay, along this curve, average rate of profit is constant. But the curve shifts downwards. But the curve shifts downwards as M increases. This is due to the negative relationship between GD and M. Now we come to the next thing, the rate of growth of capital. Owners aim at the maximization of the rate of growth of capital of the corporate of the of the firm. So it's very clear that uh, as capital stock increases, then that will give a better satisfaction, more satisfaction to the firms, firm, to the owners of the firm. So owners always try to maximize the rate of growth of the corporate capital, which is taken as a measure of the size of the firm. The main source of the rate of growth of capital is profit. 
but the firm cannot retain as much profit as it likes. Security parameter is a determinant of profit because security parameter means the owners will have to consider the job, the, the uh, job security. So therefore the owners cannot go on increasing the rate of profit. The, the means the, the managers cannot go on increasing the rate of profit because they have to see that their security parameter is intact. That means their job is not at risk. If their job is at risk, then, then it will create a lot of problems. So therefore these managers uh, ensure that uh, they will not be uh, in a trouble uh, and therefore they will make a profit, but that profit uh, will be uh, sufficient to satisfy the requirements of the uh, owners. They will not be making a profit as much as they like, or they will not be creating a profit uh, in tune with the uh, complete aspirations of the owners. So therefore, that's why we say that all the main source of the rate of growth of capital is profits the firm cannot retain as much profit as it likes. And now, under Madison's assumptions, rate of growth of capital is proportional to the profits. That's GC is A bar is security constraint and pi is profit. Definitely, there's supposed to be a connection between pi and GC. As pi increases, GC also increases. That means as the rate of profit increases, the rate of growth of capital stock also increases. The next step is to express GC in terms of D and M. Just like as we introduced GD in terms of D and M, here also we have to express GC in terms of these two variables, D and M. And for that, first we write profit as a function of two things, M and our overall capital output ratio K by X. K is capital, X is output. That's what we have written here. Pi or profit is a function of M, M is the average profit rate and overall capital output ratio K upon X. Then we know that as M increases, average rate of profit increases, then definitely the profit earned by the firm will also be raised. If the rate of profit is high, then profit earned by the firm will also be high. So there's a positive connection between these two things and that's shown here. Now, the overall capital output ratio is written as a function of diversification rate. That is K by X is written as a function of diversification rate. Given K, that means suppose that this capital is given, then given K, there is a positive relation between X and D up to a certain level. Means as diversification rate increases, the output sold by the firm will also be raised. Positive connection, but this positive connection will not go, will not go uh, to a greater extent. There will be a maximum situation. After that matchmaking situation, X will start falling. That means this positive, there is a positive connection between diversification rate and X up to a certain level. After reaching a maximum, what happens is that this X will fall, uh, consequent upon an increase in the diversification rate. Now, Substituting K by X in the profit margin, substituting for K by X in the profit function. That means we are, uh, means 
we have written k by x as a function of d. Therefore, instead of k by x, now in the profit function, we are introducing d. So profit function is a function of two things. That is one is average profit rate and diversification rate. Now, the relationship between pi and d is positive, as we have said, reaches a maximum and then declines as d is further accelerated. So pi and d, as d increases, this profit rate also increases up to a certain level. After that, this profit rate will fall. Okay. Then we now substitute pi in the GC function. So we have written GC as a function of pi profit. Now pi is a function of two things. One is M average profit margin and diversification rate. Therefore, now we are going to substitute this in this equation. That means GC growth rate of capital stock is written as a function of M and D. The rate of growth of capital is determined by the by these by these uh, factors like M and D. That is average profit and the diversification rate. Of course, there is also financial security uh, constraint. That's A bar, which is taken as constant. This A bar is taken as constant. So G C is a function of these two variables. Only. That is M and D. So here A bar is constant, and the rate of growth of capital stock is considered as a function of profit margin and the diversification rate. So there is a positive relation between GZ and M. That's on here. Positive relation is there. Then look at this figure. Here we have actually uh, portrayed all the relations between GC, between GZ, rate of growth of capital, and, and the uh, diversification rate and average rate of profit in this figure. In the first part of the figure, this one, in this figure, along x-axis diversification rate is shown, along y-axis rate of growth of capital stock. So it's clear that as diversification rate increases, initially there is a positive relation between GZ and D because as diversification rate increases, GC also increases. But this is a maximum point. Okay. After the maximum point, if you go on rising diversification rate, then GC will fall. So this relation is run by this GC curve. So this is a GC curve. GC curve starting from here, this is a GC curve. It simply shows that as D increases, GZ is also raised. And after reaching a maximum point, as D increases, GC falls. So this is shown by this. Then here, what will be the impact of the... So we have said that GC is a function of three things, two things, mainly two things, that is D and M, D and M. So the relation between D and GC is shown by this curve. Then shifting the curve, shifting this curve will show the impact of M. When your average profit margin is high, M4, you have this profit curve. You have this, uh, I, see, I said we have this GC curve. When your profit, average profit margin, uh, profit rate declines from M4 to M3, then there is a downward shift of this GC curve from this to this one. When your profit further declines, M further declines, then your GC also declines. Uh, so this When this profit uh, average profit rate declines, this GC also declines. So that's shown by this downward shift of the GC curve. So downward shift of the GC curve shows that there's a positive connection between the GC and 
per hour and profit rate. As profit rate increases, GC will go on shifting upward and if profit rate declines from M4 to M1, the, pro, the GC curve will be shifting downward. That simply means that there is a direct relation between uh, a GC and the profit rate. Now, we have shown this equilibrium here. This is a GD curve and this is a GC curve. Okay, this is the first point of equilibrium, first point of balanced growth rate. This is not maximum balanced growth, but this is a balanced growth rate, growth rate, A. Because at point A, your GD curve with M1 profit intersects your GC curve with M1 profit. That is GD curve with M1 profit intersects the GC curve with M1 profit at point A. So point A is one point of equilibrium. That means the point where GD is equal to GC. But that's not the maximum point, but there is a balanced growth rate between GD and GC. Let's come to this point B. So at point B, what we observe is that your GD2 curve, this one, with M2 profit intersects your GC curve with this one. With this one means this also M2 profit. Okay, then we have another, so this is also one point, one point of the balanced growth rate. We have another point of balanced growth rate here, C. At C, the GD curve with profit rate three is tangent to the GC curve, GC curve with profit rate three here. This is a one point of balanced growth rate. Another point of balanced growth rate is D. Here, the GD4 curve with profit mark, with profit rate M4 intersects the GC curve with GC4, growth of capital supply 4 with profit rate M4. So these are different points of balanced growth rate. Joining these points, we get balanced growth curve, balanced growth curve. But of these four points, which gives you the maximum balanced growth rate, that is B. So we say that at B, the firm is in equilibrium. At point B, at point B, the firm is in equilibrium because at, the end, at this point, the balanced, maximum balanced growth rate is attained. At point B, the maximum balanced growth rate is attained. So therefore, point B is the equilibrium point of the firm. This is the same thing is explained here. Once again, I will read out. The equilibrium of the firm is presented graphically in the following figure. The GD and GC curves corresponding to M1 in the set at point A. The GD and GC curves corresponding to M2 profit in the set at point B. The GD and GC curves corresponding to M3 in the set point C on and, and so on. If we join these points, we will get, we will get balanced growth curve BGC and the firm is in equilibrium when it reaches the highest point B on the balanced growth curve. Criticisms. Matis does not say much about the actual value of financial coefficient. There's a financial coefficient value, but what would be the actual value of that? The Matis is on more side in the board. Matis model need not be true for recessions or tight market conditions. Marys model does not specify the preference of owners for capital growth over uh, maximization of profits. Marys assumes given cost and prices whose determination is not, that's not explained because how is price and cost determined? That's not explained in the model. Continuous growth rate is uh, possible by creating new market. There is an argument, but that assumption is questionable. The model is not suitable to analyze the behavior of manufacturing business. Man's model lays on the respect, restrictive assumption that firms have their own 
Research and Development Department. So with this, we end uh, the discussion of Maris model here.